In this video, I'm going to show you how to download, install, and configure Cisco Packet Tracer. Cisco Packet Tracer is free software available from the Cisco Networking Academy. In the past, you had to be enrolled in a Cisco Academy program to download Cisco Packet Tracer. In other words, you had to be a student in the Cisco Academy program, but that's no longer true. Anyone can now download Cisco Packet Tracer. You can either use the link below this video to download Packet Tracer or simply search in Google or another search engine for Cisco Packet Tracer download. My first hit is the netacad.com website. In other words, the Cisco Networking Academy. To download Cisco Packet Tracer, you need to enroll as a student in their free course there is no cost to attend this course. It's 10 hours in length. You don't have to go through it, but if you're interested in learning a bit about the Packet Tracer interface and how it works, you can once again enroll for free. I'm gonna click sign up today to sign up for this course. And I'm gonna use English as my language. So again, the language that I'm gonna use is English. I'm gonna specify my first name, my last name, and I'll specify my email address. I need to specify a password. It needs to be at least eight characters in length, one uppercase and one lowercase. I need to specify my country. So in my example, it's the United Kingdom. Specify my gender. Specify my date of birth. I need to specify my state or province. So I'm going to specify England. I need to specify my practical experience in IT or networking. So once I've filled in those options, I can create an account. So that's it. I'm now registered on the Networking Academy website. In this example, I'm told about a new course. I'm going to close that. I'm gonna launch this course, Introduction to Cisco Packet Tracer. Now I can either launch the course or look at student resources. I'm gonna select student resources. And I'm gonna scroll down and download and install the latest version of Cisco Packet Tracer. There are different versions of Cisco Packet Tracer. The latest release is 7.2. I'm gonna download version 7.2 for Windows 64-bit. And then I'm gonna click Download and click Save to save the software to my local hard drive. Now going back, notice there is a Linux 64-bit version, a Windows 32-bit version, and a Windows 64-bit version. There is no version for Mac. If you want to run Packet Tracer on a Mac, you need to use software such as VirtualBox or VMware Workstation to emulate a Windows operating system on your PC to run Packet Tracer. Now you can also download the FAQs and then you can read information about Cisco Packet Tracer. That may help you with some of your questions but uh, Packet Tracer is fairly simple to install, so I'm not gonna go through the FAQs. Packet Tracer is now downloaded, so I'm gonna click Open Folder, and I'm gonna unzip the zip file, so extract it to my downloads directory. And then I'm gonna double click on the setup file and click Run to start the installation process. Click Yes to run the software. So before you can install Cisco Packet Tracer, you need to accept the license agreement. So read through the license agreement and make sure that you agree with it and then click I accept the agreement and click next. By default, Packet Tracer is installed in C program files. You can change that directory if you want to. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna click next. I'm gonna change the menu name to Cisco Packet Tracer 7.2 and that's because I've already got a previous release of Packet Tracer installed. So I wanna be able to run both of these. I'm gonna create a desktop shortcut and click next and click install. 
Packet Trace is now installed on my computer, you simply need to wait for that installation process to complete. I'm now told that for Packet Tracer skills based assessment to use this version of Packet Tracer, please close all web browsers or restart your computer. Now, before I do that, going back to the downloads on the Cisco website, notice I can download an older release of Packet Tracer if I want to. There is a change in the GUI or graphical user interface from version 7.1 to 7.2 of Cisco Packet Tracer. So you may want to download an older release if you prefer the older graphical user interface. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to close my browser, click OK on the setup message, and click Finish to start up Cisco Packet Tracer. I'm told that you are running Packet Tracer for the first time. Packet Tracer will save your user files in the following folder. I can change that by going to Options Preferences. I'm going to click OK. Packet Trace is now launching. Now, before I can use the software, I need to log in with the username and password that I created. And Packet Tracer has now started. Now, I'm going to quickly diverge for a second to show you the difference between the previous version of Packet Tracer and the current version. Don't worry too much about this if you've just started with Cisco Packet Tracer. I'll show you how to create new topologies in a moment. Now, there's quite a major change to the graphical user interface in this release of Packet Tracer. In the previous release, the interface was quite different. So on launch, it kind of looks the same. But notice the interface looks very different to the new version of Cisco Packet Tracer. Now, a lot of my labs were created with this release of Cisco Packet Tracer, so 7.1.1. This release, 7.2, has an upgraded graphical user interface. The interface is very different, but the functionality is very much the same. So if I open up a lab with the previous release of Cisco Packet Tracer, It looks like that, but in the new release, it looks like this. The functionality, however, is very similar. The most important thing in these labs is to get a console connection. So as an example, this is what the console connection looks like. In the old version of Packet Tracer, this is what it looks like in the new version of Packet Tracer. Now it's very similar, except the font is a lot smaller. The reason why the font is so small is under Options Preferences, the font is set to eight. So I'm gonna change that to be the same as my previous version. I previously had the fonts changed as follows. So I'll change the font in the new version to be the same as the previous version and click Apply. So now when I click on a device, notice the font is a lot larger. So that shows you that there's quite a big change in the graphical user interface of this release of Packet Tracer. What I'll do now is exit out of Packet Tracer. So exit out of both of these versions. And what I'll do again is start up Cisco Packet Tracer. So when you launch Packet Tracer for the first time, it looks like this. Some options that I suggest you change is go to Options, Preferences, make your fonts bigger, and perhaps on the interface, when using My Labs, make sure that this is turned off. Always show port labels in Logical Workspace. That is disabled by default in 7.2, but wasn't in 7.1. Now that Packet Tracer has started, you can create topologies by dragging various devices into your topology. So as an example, I can drag a 4321 ISR router into my topology, and I can zoom in to make it bigger or smaller. 
I can drag another one in here. I can name them, so double click on the name. I'll call this R1. I'll call this R2. So various router types can be added to topologies. You can also select different types of switches or hubs or wireless devices or security devices. Various devices can be added to the topology. In this example, I'm gonna start with two routers. I'm then gonna click on connections Various connection types can be added to the topology. When you hover your mouse over these connection types, the connection type is displayed down here. So I'm going to choose copper straight through and connect router 1 to router 2 on their gigabit 00 interfaces. Now, I don't see the interface labels here. Again, if you go to options preferences, you can check this option always show port labels in logical workspace and that will show the interface labels. In my labs, if you import my labs, I have those configured so you don't need these interface labels. So as an example, I could remove them and then manually place a note here to say that this is interface gigabit 000 and I can do the same over here and then I can select those and move them around as I want. Okay, so I'll click on router one. That shows the physical device view and I can zoom in here and that shows me physical interfaces on the router. Notice gigabit 000, gigabit 001. The router is currently on but I can turn it off. If I turn it off and connect to the CLI, I'm told that I need to power on the device. So I'm gonna do that and go to CLI. And as you can see here, the router is busy booting up. Do the same on router two, go to CLI. In this case, the router has already booted and the initial configuration dialog is displaying. I'm gonna say no to bypass the initial configuration dialog and press return and I can see a router prompt. Go back to router one, type no to bypass the initial configuration dialog, press enter and a router prompt is displayed. Press question mark, that shows me various commands that I can use on the router. I'm gonna type enable and press tab. That takes me to enable mode. Question mark again shows me various commands. I'm gonna type conf t to go to global configuration mode. And then I'm gonna type host tab and specify the router's name, which in this case is router one. Now I'm not trying to show you all the options available in the Cisco CLI. Have a look at my ICND1 or CCNA course if you wanna learn options available in the Cisco CLI, such as how the interface works. For now, I'm gonna type interface tab gigabit 000, and no shut of the interface, which has come up, and then specify an IP address on this interface, 10111/24. Type end. Show IP interface brief. Notice the router is now configured with this IP address on this interface. The status is up down because I haven't configured the other side. So on router two, type enable conf t host router two interface gigabit 000 no shut notice the interfaces have come up they've gone green if i shut the interface down notice the status indicators are red no shut interfaces come up ip address 10112 slash 24 mask i should at this point be able to ping router one which i can the first ping was dropped because of ARP. Show ARP shows us the ARP mappings. So we can see that this IP address was mapped to this MAC address. When routers boot up, they don't know the MAC address of neighbors. They have to learn that. And hence, when router two pinged router one, the first ping timed out. So we saw it like this, but then they succeeded. So now, if router two pings router one, all pings succeed. 
Now, once you've finished with your topology, you can close Packet Tracer down. Notice we told that any unsaved changes will be lost. Do you want to save your work? The answer is yes. Basically, Packet Tracer saves your device configurations. Now, when I start up Cisco Packet Tracer and open up my lab, the device configurations will be saved. So I can go to Recent Files and select my file, or go to Open, browse to where my Packet Tracer file is stored, and select that. Notice the topology has been restored, but not only that, when I click on the devices in the topology, and notice their configuration has been saved. So on router one as an example, the name of the router is R1, and show IP interface brief shows me the IP address of the router. On router two, click on CLI, router name is router two, show IP interface brief shows me the IP address that I previously configured, and I should be able to ping router one, which I can because the configurations were saved. However, in the real world, it doesn't work like that. In the real world, you need to save your configurations. So use the command copy running config startup config to save your configurations or use the shorthand WR. So before you turn off devices in the real world, you need to save the configurations using one of those two commands. Get in the habit of doing that. So what I like to do is once I've finished my Packet Tracer Labs, I save the configurations of all the devices to make sure that I get into the habit of saving the configurations. But Packet Tracer does make this easy for you. When you close it down, it will ask you whether you want to save your work. And if you click yes, all the configurations are saved. So that's a very basic demonstration of Cisco Packet Tracer. I've shown you how to download, install, and configure a basic network in Cisco Packet Tracer. In the rest of my course, I'll show you how to download and configure more complex networks. This video hopefully gave you a brief introduction to Cisco Packet Tracer, and if you follow this, hopefully you've got Cisco Packet Tracer working on your computer.